All right, guys. Um, had some good questions from office hours. Anybody who just came in, questions from homework, uh, from the quiz that we just took? It's graded, it's up there, it's ready uh, for you to look at. Make corrections too if you need to. How are you guys feeling? You feeling okay out there? It's the end of the second week. So can you believe this shit? We're a third of the way through. Do you understand? After today, we're actually a little more than a third of the way through. What the hell? <laughs> I can't. What else can I say to get a get? Can I get a reaction from anybody? All right, so no. this class starts in a week. What? And it's also a summer class. Wait a minute. I thought, oh, that's interesting. It's starting the, no, sorry, four days. No, I thought, oh, every, I thought they, all right, that's interesting for me to know, because I thought they forced every summer class to be in the same schedule, but I guess not. So that's, that's okay. That's good to know. I thought, anyway, that's weird, because I thought we were told. Not it is everybody, super weird. It is super weird, but, you know. Also, she's like, not the most communicative, so I'm a little lost already. That's really exciting. Yeah. Sorry. All right, here's hoping. She might be out on vacation until the moment the class starts. She'll walk in the door and- Yeah, I'll try to give her the benefit of the doubt for now. Yeah. I'm worried about mine too, because I haven't heard anything. <laughs> when, when does your class start? Tuesday, I think. We're supposed to, I because it's in it's on Zoom too. Like next Tuesday. Mm hmm. Interesting. It, is it a business class? No, it's it's like communications. I think. Communications at Grossmont. Yeah, <laughs> that's ironic. <laughs> I, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's always a bad sign. I like when I took education <laughs> classes, and my education teachers were really bad teachers. I, this is uh, not good. All right. Anybody else have um, questions or comments about future courses or interesting hats you want to show off? Or I like it when Samantha logged in. I was like, I've got. I didn't see your eyes. I just saw the top of your head. I thought, who is this person? <laughs> All right. So let me say this again. Uh, you can correct everything once, except for the final. You can't correct the final at all. It's very appropriately named, the final. Um, you can correct the quizzes. You can correct the homework if you need to. Or you can choose not to. It's your choice, right? Uh, when, you, when you correct the quiz, turn the corrections in in the same place you turn the quiz in. So if I were you, I would print the quiz out with all my feedback on it, do the corrections, and then submit. For homework 86. Ah, so there's a problem in the homework, which I kind of laugh at when people are like, oh, I got to write all that. I'm like, are you kidding? It's, it's nothing. Um, number 86 talks about rolling two dice oh crap where are you here we go first off can somebody tell me what sample space is just in general what sample space so like final space the outcomes yes it's a list of all the possible outcomes so can somebody give me one possible outcome if you roll two dice? One and one. One and one. One and one. One and two. One and three. Keep going until you're done. How many, how many outcomes are possible for one die? A normal die, not D&D 20-sided &D die. A normal die. How many outcomes are possible? Six. 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 And how many outcomes are possible for another die? Six. Six. So for every outcome on one, 
there's six possible on the other. Are you guys with me? Yes. So there's six times six, 36 total possible outcomes. If I roll a one on the first one, there's six things I can roll on the second one. If I roll a two on the first one, there's six things I can roll on the second one. So six times six, there should be a 36. Your sample size should have 36 situations in it. I like this problem already, Jeff. So there's a lot of writing and you got to do it all. And if you write the sample space out, it will be very easy to answer the questions that come after that because then you have everything you need to count. Does that help Are you guys? Is that all right? Or is that still weird? Okay. Okay. Anything else, guys? Of three measures, what tends to reflect skewing the most? <laughs> mean, mode, or median? <laughs> I like it, Billy. Um, what do you think? Uh, mean. Why? Um, because it's the average of the numbers. All right. So does the mean consider all the data points? Yes. Yes. There you go. And, and the other two don't. The other two um, don't consider all the values. All right. But we're not going to sit here and go through all your homework questions. No, 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 I'm done. That was the last one. Gotcha. How's everybody else? That actually just cleared up so much for me. Oh, sweet. Okay. I like that one fell swoop kind of things. Yeah, that was just like, oh, click, 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 click. Perfect. I almost feel like I want to meet with each of you and just say, are you okay? <laughs> you guys doing okay out there? I don't know. Yeah. See. If you want to meet tomorrow, I'd love to. <laughs> oh, that's, that's what I'm here for, buddy. Um, tomorrow, I don't know. Tomorrow's yeah. growth. Tomorrow's right. Friday, and uh, you should have your Friday. You deserve that. Well, thank you. Um, all right. I'm going to assume everything's fine then, since no one else is asking anything. All right. So let me say this. Here's some news I think you might enjoy. I have made an executive decision. I have decided to call all of my decisions executive decisions. Then I made a second decision, executive decision. Let's have this midterm only go up to chapter five. What do you think? Hooray. Is anybody upset if I make the midterm only go up to chapter five? No. I'm not, I'm good. No. Are you guys upset? I can't tell. Is anybody upset if I? Sorry. All right. Also, whatever. Jeff, shut up. You know it's good. All right. I just figure. Um, I don't think we're gonna get off a of track at all, really. But it's just, I'm just thinking about it. And there's not a lot of time for you guys to get into this stuff. Um, oh, I got a chat. So nothing else is gonna change. The midterm's still on the same day, it's, but it's just gonna cover up through chapter five instead going all the way through chapter six which is uh more in line with what i put down here anyway i might put chapter six on its own quiz later okay so that's good news yay jeff keep it going what else you got that's it it's too bad but that's pretty good by itself um i believe let me see did i make anything yeah i made one thing open that wasn't open before I don't know if anybody noticed here, binomial practice. So before we do this, oh yeah, that's right. My canvas still, it's funny. It's, my canvas just does not like me. Right. Whatever canvas. Let's review what we did yesterday real quick. And then we're gonna do that handout uh, let's see if I can turn my dinosaur off. By the way, this dinosaur has a name. Come on, work for me. Toby the T-Rex. And he actually lives up near me. Off of a... Anyway, not too far away from me. 
Um, so here's what we Is did. Is toward Palm Springs, right? Sorry again, sorry? Isn't he toward no, Palm no, no, Springs? No, no. I know what you're thinking about. There's, uh, and in Borrego Springs too, there's a lot of, um, what do you call it? Dinosaur sculpture, metal sculptures. That's not where that is. It's it's right around the corner from me in La Mesa, off of East Lake. I can't remember the name of the stupid road. Um, okay. Yeah, I think the one in Palm Springs is pink. Yeah, maybe. Um, so. Real quick review, and then we're gonna do this sheet together. So this is what it looked like creating the formula that we eventually used. Uh, so here's the idea. So a binomial situation is one in which, let's list a few things out. So binomial situation. You're, you're dying. What can I throw you? There. Yay. Binomial situation. It's got two possible outcomes. So would rolling a die be a binomial situation? No. Oh man, it's my trap. Of course it could be. So it could be uh, I roll a five or I don't roll a five. You with me? Oh, that was a trap. That was a trap, I'm sorry. Pull up. Um, there's and two, the two situations are P and Q. Beautiful. There are probabilities. Yeah. P, probability of success. Q, probability of failure. And of course, P plus Q must equal one, correct? That should make pretty much good sense. If I add the two only probabilities that exist, they should equal one. Go away. That and that's why the die made set, uh, die question makes sense. Understood. Is a which one? Sorry. The die situation makes sense because there's one possible outcome of su success, and then five outcomes of failure. Yes. So that feeds into what the values of P and Q are, but there are only two situations. You get a five or you don't. That's two situations. Now, of course, are both of those 50-50? You, like you just said, no, because one of them has more chances to happen, right? So I don't know. I didn't really pick on my little brother too much besides I think I fed him a marble. But my little brother, who's like bigger than me anyway, but he's still my little brother, he, uh, he asked me if I'm still teaching probability. I'm like, yeah. And he's like, well, stop it, Jeff, man. Either something's going to happen or it ain't. Everything's 50-50, Jeff. And I'm like, Jim, I'm so happy you did not become a doctor because I don't want your patients to say, doc, what's my chances? Ah, 50-50. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, his name's Jim? Yes. Is his middle name something with a J as well? No. Because isn't your name like John Jeff? John Jeffrey Waller, my my uh, my brother. So many J's. James Victor Gerald. So if you want to really get into it real quick, I'm glad my stepfather did not adopt me, not just because I hate him, but because then my, my name would be John Jeffrey Gerald, and that would just, I, I couldn't. Jingleheimer Schmidt. Yeah, exactly. It's already bad. I always got that John Jeffrey Waller Heimer Schmidt. Anyway. <sighs> sorry, that's TMI. I know. I'm sorry. Um, so two possible outcomes. So probabilities associated with those outcomes and a fixed Jeff, a fixed number of trials. These, this could be rolling a die. This could be picking people. Like you pick five people. So that's that's what this is. This would be the letter N. Okay. Yes. Just to codify that, we basically kind of talked around this, but here it is, all splayed out. What makes a situation a binomial situation? This does. 
And if I'm in this situation, I know I use this formula for the probability. Oh yeah, Jeff, you got some more to talk about, that's true. So there's the formula for the probability of some event occurring in a binomial situation. So I can say, well, if I roll a die eight times, what's the probability that I get five lives, right? Okay. So there's more to it than this. So, so we have a binomial distribution of probabilities. Oh, shit. What did I say every time we come up with a new distribution of data? What do I want to be able to figure out? And what does C mean in that um, equation? Does somebody remember what C means? Choose. Choose, good. So this would be like I got eight people, choose five of them to do something. Oh, okay, okay. So we'll, we'll do an example. Let's do an example of this kind of problem. And then we'll get into, but can somebody answer the question I just asked? If I give you data in a different way, if I give you a different distribution of data, what two things do we want to be able to figure out? The mean standard deviation. Yes, the mean and the standard deviation, right? And, and just to give you a little teaser, these, the mean and standard deviation formula for a binomial problem is they're, they're the most beautiful yet. There's no tables. Oh, thank the gods, right? So just, we'll see that in a minute. All right, is everybody, I'm gonna erase this, is that all right? Or somebody gonna hate me if I do that? You guys ready? Here, I'll leave that there. So what if I am in the situation where I roll a die uh, eight times? What's the, and I, what's the problem I get uh, exactly uh, five fives? Should that probability be high or low? Low. Yeah. I would not expect to get five fives when I roll a die eight times. So this is going to be low. It might actually be too low for a calculator to handle, but we'll find out. So what do I need? Can, can you guys, you need to be able to identify this as a binomial situation. There's a fixed number of times I do something. Are there two possible outcomes? Yes, what are they? What are the two possible outcomes? Five or not five? Good. Five, or not five. five, not five. So this will be my success. So what's the probability I get a five? One out of eight? Oh, be careful. No, no, no. I don't have some freaky ass D and D dice, right? This is One out of six. One out of six, good. So that eight, oh. that eight just means I'm rolling them eight times. It has nothing to do with the probability each time I do it. Since I have a normal die, the probability, I, if I roll it once, what's the probability I get a five? One out of six. So it's probably I don't get a five. Five out of six. Five out of six. Now it's a little better to not write this as a decimal because anything you write is wrong. Because anything you write, you're gonna have to round it. Are you guys with me? Mm -hmm. Has anyone done one divided by six? What does it come out to be? One divided by six. Point one six repeated. Six, 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 six. Yeah, exactly. So I, I don't wanna write six for the rest of my life. So let's just keep it as one over six. Bam. Now, what's N? What's N? 
What's the number of times I'm doing something? Eight. Eight, eight times. I'm doing something eight times. So now to figure this out, the probability of five successes, and choose X. So what, how am I gonna set this up? You yeah, know what N is. So. Eight. Eight rolls, I wanna choose five. five of them to be a five. You guys with me? Please don't freak out because I got five fives and there's you know, just, it's gonna be okay. You know what's P? One and one six. Six to the five. Good. I want five of them. I, I eight things choose five successes. So how many successes do I want? Well, I just said five. So it's a little bit repetitive, but that's nice. And so how many failures do I have to have? I got a six. Wait, what is oh three? Three. I have eight total rolls. Five of them are fives. So three of them won't be fives. Let's see if you guys can plug that in your calculator. How do you do the choose again? So it's uh, it's so I'm gonna put eight math. Then uh, you're gonna pick uh, probability. Probability. Okay. Oh, I see. I see. I got it. Well, I think it's the fourth one, right? Is it the fourth one or the third one? Third one. Third one. And CR five times, and then you keep going. My bees. I'm not careful. My bees look like deflated bees. Yeah. That's it. Zero wow. point. I should probably do it too, right? Uh, 0 0.0042. So eight math probability times. You gotta be careful with your parentheses to get the whole one six to the fifth power and the whole five six to the third power. Yeah, it's not as small as I thought. It's awesome. Point oh oh Four two. I think that's so. I think that's what you said. That's what I got. All right. Let me know if you have trouble getting that. Quick question. Yes. Um. Where do you get number five? I'm a little confused. How many successes do I want to have? From the question, how many successes is it, is it asking for? Five. Five. So that's the probability of oh. five successes. So that that's means okay. the X is five. That's right? so why it's kind of repetitive. Okay. So eight rolls, choose five of them to be successes. So I want five successes and I want the rest failures. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I got air. I did something wrong. So it's more than likely that that idea of hitting the over arrow. So here, let me do it on the calculator real quick. Bum, bum, bum. Oh yeah, that's right. Damn it. Ugh. Sorry, I, I just haven't. Um, what do you want to call it? I haven't um, cleared up my stupid. Uh, Calculator emulator here. Let me be a little less lazy and just look at this. I mean, that's not even lazy. That's like intentionally foolish. All right, John. All you had to do was turn it upside down. Well, I thought it was too far over, but it comes out it wasn't. Okay. How close did I get? Damn. All right, guys. So we're going to do eight. Let me see if I can get more of this in here. Go out a little bit. All right. Eight math probability 
Third one is choose. Does anyone know why there's an exclamation mark in our calculator? Is it for radicals? Nope. Is it just happy to see us? Yes. No. Maybe I'll tell you about it in a minute. So A, choose five. Now, do you see how I'm in the subscript? I'm down right now. That sucks. So I have to the over arrow to come back up. How did you get choose? All right, here we go. So eight, math, probability, choose. Is that right? Yep. Five, and then you have to hit the over arrow to come back up. Times parentheses, one divided by six parentheses to the fifth. All right, let me stop for a minute. It really does look like Samantha is just a frog playing with her calculator. <laughs> Yes. It's really good. It's neat. Then you hit the over arrow times parentheses five divided by six parentheses to the third power. So every time you go down, you want to hit the over arrow to come back up. Every time you go up, you want to hit the over arrow to come back down. And this rounds to be one ten thousandth the answer to life, the universe, and everything. I like it. It's just an extra bonus. If you don't know what I mean by that, then don't worry about it. It's fine. Um, is that all right, guys? You guys okay out there? Okay. All right. Thank you, calculator. Look at you with the full battery. Who kicks ass? Who did that? All right. Where am I? The answer for that was point zero zero four one six seven six one nine three. Yeah, zero zero four two. Yep. Let's see, can I make you do this without having to get up? Yes. Fantabulous. Should be. Okay. Focus. So now, what we have left to do, we discussed how to calculate probabilities in this situation. Um, now we have to talk about how to figure out the mean and the standard deviation, right? So let me do a slightly uh, more straightforward example uh, to talk about this. Just destroyed everything. Oh no. My whole thing is dead. No, oh, okay. I think you can take it. Here we are. That was exciting. I need a larger space. Let's do that. I can't do it. Now, um, let's say. I'm not getting anything else out. No. All right. Let's say that uh, somebody hold on. Uh, let's say that somebody makes sixty percent of their free throws. You don't know what a free throw is. It's just a shot in basketball. So let's say that somebody can make 60% of the shots they take that are called free throws. I like it. If they take 20 shots, shot, 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 okay, so they take 20 shots, how many would you expect them to make? Twelve. 
12. What was that? 12. Yeah, 12. Does everybody, anybody disagree with that? Probably not now that I said I was right. <laughs> All right. How'd you get that? Uh, 20 times 0. 0.6. Yeah, yeah. What's the idea of a percentage? 60% of his three throws, so 60% of 20. Bam. Right? And, and this is what the average is. Is, he, is this person definitely going to make 12 free throws every time they take 20 shots? Think about it. Well, I see a lot of people giving me the right answer. Will this person always make 12 free throws every time they take 20 free throw shots? No. No. So this is why this is an average. On average, every time they take 20 shots, they'll make 12 of them. So another name for average is expected value. So the mean is 20 times 0.6, and that's 12. So the mean in general is N times P. Holy shit. That is the best formula yet for the mean. I don't have to add anything. I don't have to make a table. I don't have to multiply thing. No, I just have to do, well, you have to multiply one thing, N times P. Now, unfortunately, well, I don't think this is too unfortunate. I think a lot of you guys are going to be really upset about this. The math behind the standard deviation is a little bit of beyond us. But what it comes out to be is the square root of NPQ. Is that your attempt at a sigma? That is sigma. What are you talking about? Yeah, okay, no. it just looks funky. That was my graffiti version. How's that? Is that better? Yes, thank you. So what's the standard deviation for this case up here? It would be square root of 20 times 0. 0.6. What is Q? Probability failure. Sorry. Yeah, true. But what is it in specifically? Here. 0.4. Good. So the, square, the standard deviation would be square root of 20 times P, 0. 0.6 times Q, 0. 0.4. What is that going to be, math boy? It's going to be 2 point something. 2.2. I don't know. Two point one nine zero nine. Wow. It was close. So let me, oh, what, uh, oh, why 0.4? Is that your question? If the probability of success is 60%, what must the probability of failure be? 40%. Is that cool? Is this the four you're talking about? Or I don't know what's happening. Be more specific. Frog. <laughs> no, I understand now. Okay, okay. okay. Right. Question. Um, if, or not if, uh, the, um, so for sigma, how it's two point blah, 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 right? Why are you not using the approximate equal signs yeah sure i can do that oh i just didn't know if it was like different for this class because i know i've been using them a lot no you, technically you need to because that's not equal to that but it's yeah. equal in okay. terms of what you're supposed to average to here yeah. but you're right it should be a, a, a approximately equal to. uh let me think oh so who remembers let me take a step back and add a new idea here who remembers what percentage was in within two steps of the mean? Do you guys remember this? 68%, right? 68. That, was one. that was one. Within one step is 68%. Within two steps, 
95. So what's the probability that something happens more than two steps away? What's the probability something happens out here? 0.5 on both of them. 0.25 on both of them. So 5% chance. A total of 5% chance that something happens outside of there. Stay with me now. Stay with me. So this is sort of like, remember, I can't remember exactly what this was. Was it 74.8 inches tall or something? So this was a height of a man. Would you say it would be unusual to find a, a, a man whose height is up here? Would that be unusual? Yes. Yes. There's only a two and a half percent chance on that side. So, so if I found a dude who is outside of this middle part, that would be unusual. If you saw somebody walking down the street and they were right here on the height chart, you would do a double take, possibly, right? How often is it that you see somebody in everyday life who's, who's about four foot tall, who's not a, a child? Are you with me? No? All right. So that would be unusual. So it kind of makes sense. So what we do is we sort of expand this idea. We say, we're going to call anything that is outside of two standard deviations away from the mean, we're going to call that unusual. So the minimum, so let me see if I can say this correctly. If I have the mean and I go up two steps, and I go down two steps, that defines what is usual. Anything out here would be unusual. It's crazy. Is that, you guys, does that make, I really want this to make sense as to why we, we thought, hmm, let's do that shit. Not just because, but because it makes sense. So, can somebody tell me what values these are for this person? What would be an unusually low and an unusually high number of free throws to make for this person? Keep forgetting got some more markers over there. Anybody? So how do you get like this one? You just have to do 12. Oh no. Oh well, let's try you. You just have to do 12 plus two standard deviations. Um, 16.382. Sorry? 16.382. Sounds about right. 16. 382. I like it. And then down here. 7.618. Yeah, 7.618. So if this person took 20 shots, 20 free throws, would it be unusual for them to make 17 of them? Yes. Yes, because it's above the maximum usual. Could that happen just randomly? Of course. Right. Right, right, right. It's so always like, 90, it's always 95% between is 95. Well, it's for a normal distribution. So we sort of taken that something that works for normal distributions and we just used it for everything. Okay. To start with. And to be really honest, there's something we didn't talk about we could have, but even if it's if it isn't normally distributed, it's every distribution in the universe, no matter what the shit it looks like, will have 75% at least within two steps. It's kind of neat. No matter how you make your numbers, if you do this and you go two steps out for the mean, you will catch at least 75% of the data, no matter what. Ah, ah, ah. Math controls you. But... Okay. 
So let's do something uh, besides this free throw business. Uh, what if you find a penny on the ground and you pick it up? If you're a germaphobe, maybe you pick it up with, uh, with gloves or not. You pick up this penny. How can you check to see if it's a fair penny? Let's say if you flip the penny 500 times. Right, if you flip this penny 500 times, two things. One, check your life. If you're flipping a penny 500 times, well, especially with the pandemic, I actually could see myself doing this. Um, two, how many heads would you expect to show up? 250. Yeah, this one's easy. I don't even have to use any formulas or anything. Half of this. I would expect half of this to show up. So I'd expect 250. So what if, what if you got 247? What do you think right now? Do you think that, does that mean anything? Does that mean, oh, this penny's been messed with, oh. No. No, don't mean shit. What if you got 267? 267. I think that could still happen with a normal penny. I see. So the idea that we come up with this, this, this definition of unusual, Later this semester, we're actually going to fine tune it for different situations. It's not always going to be two, to be really honest. But the standard definition is two for most situations. Two steps away, two standard deviations. You guys with me? A little bit? Okay. Um, but using that definition, we can find the technical definition of where unusual starts. So when should I start to suspect something? When, when would I start to show evidence? that this has been tampered with. So can somebody help me out? So the mean is 250. Take a minute and figure out what the standard deviation is and then figure out what the min and max expected values are. And I'll just stand here. It'd be really useful. Oh, interesting. I never thought about okay. 11.1803. Is that the standard deviation? I believe so. Okay. So what did anybody else do it yet? That does make sense to me. Because half of 500 is 250, half of that is 125. 121 is 11 squared. So 125 should be a little more than 11. What'd you get again? 11 point? Uh, 1803. 1803? Okay. Anybody else get that same thing? Okay. Yeah, I got that too. Sweet. So now the minimum is gonna be the mean minus two steps and the maximum is gonna be the mean plus two steps. Now, let me ask you real quick, real quick, before we go any further, me writing this down, what am I assuming about the coin that I've written this down? That is 50-50, what am I assuming about the coin? It's not weighted. Good, assuming it's a fair coin, I'm gonna set up what I expect to happen. And then we're gonna see, if I flipped it 500 times, when would it be unusual, right? This is going to come back in chapter eight. I've never thought to make this distinction right now. This is kind of exciting to me. We are assuming that is a fair coin. So that if I flipped it, I would know how to tell if a certain coin was fair or not. Whatever, Jeff. So what do you guys get here? Minimum is... 
Two hundred twenty seven point six three nine four. Two twenty seven point three six. So it should be six four, right? Or you you might use more here. I did uh, one eight zero three, not just one eight zero. Okay. Uh, and then this one is going to be two seventy two point three six. So if we did find it, Betty, and we did flip it 500 times, and we got 297 heads, right? Find a penny. We flip it 500 times. And we got 297 heads. Is that evidence that it's been tampered with? Yes. Yes. Does that mean it's been tampered with? No. No. No, because there's a huge difference between evidence and proof. But this could be one piece of evidence that goes into creating a case that ends up showing proof. Are you guys with me? This is what people don't understand. This is all about probabilities. This is all about things that could happen. Is it impossible to have a nice, fair coin and flip 500 straight heads? Is that impossible? Not no. impossible. Mm -hmm. It's not impossible. It is completely possible. Is it likely? No. No. Hell no. So the idea, do you guys know like like in a in a in a murder case, they get a splotch of blood and they say, oh, the DNA matches with with the um defendant. Does that mean that that's definitely that defendant's blood? Mm -hmm. No. no, there is a small, but still a non-zero chance that two people have similar enough DNA that it comes out the DNA test being a match. Now, if you add in the fact that this person is a, is a suspect for several reasons, this one piece of evidence together with others makes a really good case. Are you guys mm -hmm. so I'm not trying to create you, turn you into lawyers, but this is just one place statistics is used. Right, is is court cases. Um, okay. Okay, good. I've done all this stuff. Good. So let's look at this handout. Right. Oh, let me see. Did Canvas ever open it? Let's see. What are you doing, Canvas? You did. Well, so what? I'm not going to use it anyway. Uh, let me see. Can everybody locate this? All it took was like 10 minutes for this to open for me. And look what I put right here. I put something very useful. What's the handout titled? It's, uh, hold on, it's binomial practice. It's in unit four that goes along with chapter four. Got you. So let me open this in a different way makes things easier for me because it's all about making my life easy. Where'd you go? I know meal. There you are. Yay. Open. There you are. Fantastic. All right, let me see if this poor thing still works that I threw on the ground. All right. Moment of truth. USB, I'm still good. You can never get it on the first try. Or the second. There we go. Get a little jump. There you go, baby. All right, all right, all right, all right. So let's take a look at this thing. Get in there. So um, this is actually from, I don't know how many years back, to be honest, but oh well, it's just a handout. It's not up-to-date data, but who cares? I could have just given you something completely made up. So back, maybe this is about six years ago, 15.2% uh, of San Diegans smoked. I have no idea where it is now, the number. Um, take a minute, can you identify, don't say this out loud, just really quickly, can I identify these three things? Yes. Don't say it. Just write them down and then and then I'll write them down. Let's see if we agree. All right. 
What's N? 44. Somebody else tell me what, what's P? One, one, five, two. Good. We do not write these as percentages. We write them as actual numbers. All right now, somebody else tell me what's Q? It's a conspiratorial. No, no, stop. Not Q and I. What's little Q in this case? 0. 0.848. 848. I just do one minus, right? P and Q always have to add to one. So how do you get Q? You do one minus P. You're going to mind your P's and Q's. I know, I know. I'm sorry. That's not where the saying came from. Pints and quartz. Pints and quartz is a, is, a, is a good theory, but it's not a definite known thing. Um, and then this is just, this always confuses people. I just put this here just to show an example. So I have it written down somewhere of how to put stuff in the calculator. Cool. So if I wanted to know what's probably three San Diegans smoked, I would do this. Can you guys just take a minute and put this in? Let's see if we all get the same number. Let's see if we all get the same number. Don't forget to hit over and over, you know, go up to go back down. You know, if you think you have the answer. You know, I think going forward, I'm going to request at least one student wear a hat with the animal on it because it's just really making my day every time I see it. Thank you for doing that, Samantha. The little frog is, no matter what I do or say, it's a little happy. He's like, oh, it's all good. It's all good with me, Joe. Um, anybody get that yet? Yes. What'd you get? 0.161771175725. No. I got 0 0.0539. Yes. I'm not sure what happened to you, Billy. Failing on you, Jeff. I didn't do it. Um, so let me see if I can show this. Hold on. Let's focus. All right, guys. That's what it should look like right there. Can you see what happened? Can you see what's different? All right, get here. That's the wrong button. There we go. Okay, all right. Now, oh shit. Here we go. So down here, N is always going to be 44 for this problem because that's the setup. For some reason, I always have somebody think that the probability changes. No, I cannot ask a question and change this percentage. Does everybody agree with me? If 15.2% of San Diego and smoke, I cannot change that just by asking a question. So these are just questions I'm asking. P and Q will not change. All right, all right, maybe, maybe. So what goes here? Seven. Seven, I like it, because I want seven successes. And then P, of course, is still 0.152. And the number of successes is seven. Q is 0.848. What goes up here? 37. 37, yeah. And just you remember it, the quick way is the two exponents have to add to be the total, which only makes sense because I'm breaking 44 people up into two groups. 
All right, now let's see what we get for this weirdness. Don't forget, if you hit, your, if you hit um, do you guys know if you hit second, enter, second, enter, it, it'll display the last thing you typed in, and then you can just go edit it. It's really nice to, especially for the embedded units. This is not that big of a thing. I have it. All right, what'd you get? Um, point one six one one. Kick ass. What does that mean exactly? Somebody else. So that's the number. I agree with that number. Let me know if you didn't get that number. I have a quick question. Do we not have this this worksheet on Canvas? I can't find it. We totally do. It's in unit four and it's called binomial probability, I think is what it's called. My chapter four isn't open. No, so no, no. You're, I think you're looking where you turn homework in. Yes. Is, oh, sorry. Where am I supposed That's to be? Towards the bottom. Yeah, I know. This kind of sucks. I could probably organize this better. So down here is where you turn homeworks in. Yeah. But up here, where it says unit three, that's where all the worksheets are. Unit four, that's where all the worksheets are. And there's, it, yeah, this is called binomial practice. That's what I call it. Do you see that? Mm. If not, you might need to refresh. I don't know if you were in Canvas before I unlocked this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what happened, because here it is now. Okay, okay. thank you. Sure. All right, where are you? There you are. Okay, so what was I? Oh, yeah. What does this mean? In this situation, what does this answer mean? Probability that exactly seven smoke. Good. I love it. Is there a different way to say that? You know, like I could say it in German if I looked it up real quick. No. So here's the other way to say that. 16.11% of the time that I pick 44 San Diegans, I would see seven of them smoke. That's a little bit more complicated way to say it. I know. If I took many, 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 many groups of 44 San Diegans, 16.11% of those groups would have seven that smoke. All right, sorry, sorry. That's a little more in the weeds, but just want to throw that out there. His probabilities, I want to say this real quick. My little brother in his whole 50-50 thing, it's because people don't understand probabilities because they don't make sense for small amounts. So like, what does 50% chance of flipping a head mean if I'm only going to flip the coin once? It really doesn't mean shit. It only means something if I do it like 500 times. Then I know it should come out pretty close to 250, half, 50% 50 of 500. Yeah. All right, I'll stop, I'll stop. So part B, I will tell you this, you will get a weird answer. So if you get a weird answer, just wait, if you're not sure how to interpret it, but go ahead and try to set this part up. Oh shit, what are you doing? I don't want you, go away. Sure, you get a weird answer. No, you don't. Wait, yes, you do. There it is. Yeah, it's wonderfully weird. Did anyone get seven something? Yeah. What is wrong, you know, if you write this down? Why you is need to add times to the ten. Or ah, times 10 so negative four. Did you guys all get this blurry thing? Hold on. 
I got 37.312. Well, that's not good. Why are you not focusing? There you go. Oh, I'm sorry. I need a shortcut. calculator. I did a shortcut. I did a math shortcut. I'm really sorry. Um, let me do this the whole way through. Let me stay blurry while I do it. And then I'll explain my shortcut. Uh, I have 7.06. Seven yeah, yeah, yeah. You got it. All right, here you go, guys. There's the full thing, not shortcut. Eight to the forty-fourth. So now let me ask you this: What is anything to the zero power? One. One. How many ways can you choose nothing from forty-four things? Is that a weird zero. question? One. There's only one way to choose nothing from forty-four things. You choose nothing, you're done. So this is one, this is one. And that's why I, I only typed this in at first because the other parts were one, who gives a shit? Do you have to know that? Do you have to remember that? Do you have to do that? No, who gives a shit, right? I just showed you it comes out the same way because calculator's like, all right, it's one dude, whatever. Um, now, now, the thing that's wrong with this is there's a little E dude, right? I kind of rounded this piece, but just stay with me. So let me do this. Uh, what does that E dude mean? I heard somebody say that just a second ago. What does that E thing mean? E. What was the correct answer again, Jeff? The one I have up here? Yeah, point zero three one one. No, no, it's 7.0699 E negative four. The E it means exponent, right? Not really. It means times 10 to the, it means scientific notation. Yeah. So if you ever see an E, all it really means is move the decimal this many times. And if it's negative, you move it back. If it's positive, you move it forward. So if I move the decimal back one, two, three, four, this will be 0007. I mean, and I could put like an 07 there, but why would I do it? Anybody not okay with that? Are you guys okay? With that? Does anyone remember scientific notation? I'm still I'm still having a problem entering the one for seven point zero seven. Are well, you not getting the answer yet? No, I did something wrong and it said error, and now I'm trying again. Um, that's really small screen. <laughs> okay. Is that better? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well then. Oh crap. Okay, I'll figure it out. If if I can't get it, I'll ask after class. Okay. All right. So let's go back to this. Yeah, I'm getting weird answers. All right. So now this question is easy, especially because I did most of the work for you. Can we go in the pool today? Um, maybe. Hold on. Well, let's go in the pool. So. Oh, sorry. You're fine. <laughs> um, so the probably at least one smokes. So remember this about the at least one is one minus the probability of none because they're opposites. And didn't we just calculate this? So this would just be one minus 0. 0.0007. And watch this, guys. Guys. The quick way to do one minus a decimal that's less than one. What makes this nine? Nine. What makes this nine? Nine. What makes this nine? Nine. What makes the last one 10? Three. Done. That works for every decimal less than one. And I know some of you guys are going to go, I got this thing. It's called calculator. Mr. Wall. All right, all right. Yes, that's what I think you sound like. <laughs> all of you. Um, no, do part D. Part D should be quick, right? We know those things. 
throw that stuff in there. Not a big deal. No, Jeff. It's point six eight eight. Is that what it is? Sweet. Oh, I don't want to do that one. Beautiful image. Let me see. Uh, you want to guess who do you want me to tell you? Where pop up to is like two point. I don't know. Take me out of my misery, please, dear God. I'm trying to two do that. Point, two point two point three eight one five. Two point three eight two. Two point three eight one five. Two point three eight two. Yes. Fine. Of course, it's fine. Damn, damn it. Now. Just remind you guys. Now, real quick, the reason I'm asking that the way I am is because the next number is actually four, unless you round to that place where you're fine. So you could say 2.3815, that's fine. Or you could say 2.381, because I just need you to go out three places. Now, does anyone have any problems with the fact that I did not put a two here? Let me make sure you guys are with me on this. Ethically? Well, no, math doesn't care about your ethics. You only round the one that you go to? Because this is not actually a five. This is a four seven that was rounded. So mm -hmm. since it's a four, if I round it to this place, it stays yeah. okay, okay. So quick little note. You don't so round, you round, 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 round. round. Like, uh, dominoes. Sorry? I said you don't round and then round and round and then yeah. round. Yeah. You'd find it. like dominoes. This one doesn't make that one change, or it make that one change, and make that one No. Yeah. Also insanity. A little bit. Um, and now I can do this pretty much exactly like I said. So I put the mean in the middle, but now I want to go up and down two steps because that's what the definition of where unusual starts, right? I don't know what it's going to be, Jeff. 1.9. Two, six. Sorry. I got 11.452. Oh, yeah, I was doing this one. So 11.452. Do you guys agree with that? Six, yeah, that sounds about right. And I already forgot what I said for down here. What do you guys get for down here? 1.924. So would it be unusual if I, if we did go out and we took a group of 44, would it be unusual to find 15 of them smoke? Yes. Yes. Because here's where usual is. So anything out here on this side or that side would be unusual. 15's on that side. Unusual. <laughs> Ah. All right. All right. Not too horrible, is it? Maybe? No? So this is how one little thing we could do is we could test claims. So like if I had a claim that a that a coin had been tampered with, I can test it using this. If somebody had a claim that the number of cancer cases in a certain town was too high, I could use this process. 
right? I picked that example specifically because it's kind of like what happened here in California with the whole Aaron Brockovich thing and all that kind of stuff. Does anyone know that name, Aaron Brockovich? It's not just a movie. It's a movie based on a real thing. All right. Um, let's take a break, guys. Come back at three. And we'll get into chapter five. Because we're crazy people. Of course, let me know if you have any questions right now. Can you put that screen back up and put it back to the the part B B? <laughs> I just realized it's B and then B. B B. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna try to get that sorted out. Okay. Here, wait a minute. Let me do one thing here. It's coming back, don't worry. Shoot out. Okay. Now I can check my mail. Let's see. January of My dad used to whistle that all the time. Oh, really? Yeah. Right. Is that anyway? It's gonna get too personal. That's good memories. No, it, it no. Me, me and my dad are good. But I actually, he lives across the country, so I don't see him very often. So it was kind of like it was just weird to hear because oh. he used to like whistle through his teeth, and he used to always whistle that. Whistle. I can't whistle through my teeth. Yeah, it sounded like it hurt, but he did it all the time. I have no idea what that means. What's the other thing I whistle? I whistle that a lot just because it's fun. Um, maybe it's an old man thing. I don't know. I got it. I got the answer. I yeah. answered it right. <laughs> Anybody else still having trouble with that? Anybody who's out there still? Okay. I'm going to stop sharing, see if anybody yells at me. That's a dumb one, I'd say. Oh, 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 O'Reilly.
Can I go through the equation that you have uh, scrolled at the top of the binomial practice, 44 math probability, three NCR. I don't know why I keep getting it wrong. So don't forget, um, in between, so when you do uh, this, actually, was your calculator, when you do sub, when you do that, do the 44 show up and then a C, or does it say NCR? NCR. On your screen. Okay, okay. I don't remember seeing that when you showed me. That's kind of nice because then you don't have to hit the over arrow, if that's true. Um, I really need to get my emulator to work. I know what it needs for me. All right. Oh, here. Oh, because it's up three times. You don't go back down for the 0 0.848. It, it stays up. I get it. Did you get it to work? All right, three times, three. You go up three and then back down. No, I, I don't know what's happening. So you're over thinking it, I think, maybe. Um, all right, so let me see if I can see this. So let's do this together. Okay. 44. No, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me make sure. So when you do it, yours doesn't look like this. 44 with just a C and then a number, right? Right. It, okay, so let me change this. Hold on. All right, so yours looks like this. 44 math probability. Yours looks like that. Yes. Okay. So choose, uh, what was it, three times. So you don't have to, you're not down. You don't have to worry oh. about the over arrow or anything because you're not down. Um, times 0. 0.152. Now, when you do this to the third power, does it just look like that? Uh, no, it puts a little three up there. Oh, so you've got an interesting, that's weird. You have a combination somehow. That's weird. Wait a minute. Mine's like that too, which I think is why I had a hard time with the oh, one that I was having a hard time with. It's like you have a, you have an in-between um, software on there. All right, so I, I, I don't know. So, so, so ignore this first part. So when you guys do this, it just says NCR in the middle, right? Right. All right, so I have to hit the over arrow. You don't, because you're not, it's not a subscript. You're just, just doing it all on one thing. But then when you do your um, times 0.152 to the, it puts the three up here, right? Yes. And then you hit the over arrow to come back down. Mm -hmm. Times 0.848 to the, uh, what was it, 41. And it gives me 0 0.0539. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Yeah. I hadn't put the three in. Okay. The two. Okay. That'll do it. That'll do it every time. Oh, oh. Yes. I let me see if I can do this. Anybody who's out there who might be curious about this. This is what I used when we went into um, this is this is like a decal on my wall. That's that's like whiteboard. <laughs> So then I finally said, no, screw it. I need a whiteboard. I need a real whiteboard. Here's, get away from me. Get over there. Okay. Oh, I'm still recording. Everyone. Hello. Is everyone back? I'm still your teacher. Don't worry. No, cure this. That's just silly, Joe. That's just silly. All right. 
Okay, so we are all crazy. We know this. We are all crazy taking a six week stats course. So we're going to get into chapter five now. Um, let me ask you something. A, a binomial probability situation, right? A binomial probability situation. Would that be a discrete situation or a continuous situation? I think it would be discrete. Why? Because there's only two possible outcomes. Mm -hmm. But I um, don't could those outcomes be uh, continu continuous? Yeah, I guess so. Mm -hmm. I mean, if they're like, I don't know, the decimals and stuff like that, everything can be more precise, I guess. What are the outcomes of a binomial situation? And this is not just for you, Annika, just because you spoke up, but if you know, you can answer. It could be anybody, though, so don't feel like you're on the spot. Mm -hmm. So in this situation, what, was the what, 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 was the what, what are the outcomes for a binomial probability? What what are the possible? What are the var What does the variable represent? What does x represent in a binomial probability problem? Success or failure? Yeah. Well, one of those two. Well, so X represents the number of successes. Is everybody with me? Is everybody back? No. X for a binomial probability represents the number of successes, correct? When I rolled eight dice and I said I wanted to have five fives, I wanted to know the probability I got five fives. So if I roll 20 dice, can I ask what's the probability I get exactly 4.297347255558176299997354111 twos? No, that doesn't make any damn sense. So your first instinct was correct. Binomial probability situations are all about the probability is all about number of times something happens. So it is discrete, totally. So we're going to transition. Chapter four is all about discrete probability distributions. So of course, we're going to now get into continuous probability situations. All right, let me, I really, really want you guys all with me. So um, when we, in chapter four, the very first thing we did was the X, P of X stuff, right? I know, hold on. So the very first thing we did in chapter four was this stuff here, X, P of X. This could be number of dogs you own and blah, 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 right? All right, right. So that's, it's very agree that's obviously discrete. Could you own 1.7 dogs, I hope? Well, I will not. That sounds terrible. Okay. And then binomial probabilities are all about rolling a uh, uh, flipping a coin five hundred times and counting how many heads. So that's a, again, that's discrete. So is every distribution we're going to run across discrete? What about the distribution of heights of of things or weights of things? Are those discrete outcomes? Are those discrete variables? No. No, they're no, continuous. Not. Sorry? They're continuous. Continuous. I love it. So chapter five is all about we have to take the step into continuous. So what? So can you start to imagine? Doesn't it feel like it should be crazy difficult going from zero, one through three to every possible value? So it feels like it should be not the easiest thing in the world, but it, thankfully it's not going to be horrible. 
we just have to change how we look at things a little bit to make it not so horrible. <clears throat> so let me give you a seemingly unrelated thing. Have any of you guys ever played darts, thrown darts? Darts, yeah. I know this is a horrible representation of a dartboard, but too bad. Somebody ran over my dartboard, okay? I feel bad about it already. And, and somebody stole some of my pieces. Anyway. What? All right. So there's, has anyone ever played darts? Yeah, of course. Most of us, when we play, we don't necessarily play the official way. Most of the time, where do we want the dart to end up? The bullseye. The bullseye. I like it. But so the real way you like go by numbers and stuff. Yeah, you have to get to an exact place, and that's why you don't always want to hit the bullseye. And there's all this. Anyway, so let's not go there. Let's just say we want to hit the bullseye. Why is the bullseye a really good place to get to? Why, why, is that, why does that mean like, ooh, you're good? Because the probability of hitting it is really low since it's so small. There it is. Such a small area that the probability, so assuming you're not skilled at all, you're just randomly throwing the dart there, which is a good assumption for like me. I have zero skill at darts, unless I get a little drunk and then somehow I'm better. Although everybody's also in more danger. Um, so if I threw a dart at the board and we, holy shit, if you're not making it better. If I threw a dart at the board, we only counted the darts that hit the dartboard, right? So we don't count the ones that hit my little brother <laughs> on the head. Here's his misshapen head because I just really, I'm sorry. Um, we don't count the ones that hit the wall. We don't count the ones, we only count the ones that hit the dartboard. It's much more likely that it would end up here than it would end up here because this is a bigger area. So if this area, if the area of the bullseye was, uh, what makes sense here, Jeff? I don't know, dude, make something up, 6%. Let's say that's 6% of the total area. What's the probability then that you would just throw a dart randomly and it would get into the bullseye? 0.6, 0.06. One oh six, six percent chance, right? If I assume the whole thing is a hundred percent. So here's the key. This is so cool. This is so cool. If you have a pro a, a continuous probability distribution and you can graph it, and we've seen examples of that already. There, there's one. There's a continuous probability distribution, and I've graphed it. You make the whole area one then any probability question is just equal to the area that that question represents. What, Jeff? Just like this. If I ask a question, what's the probability I make it into this triangle here, it would be equal to the area of this triangle. That would be the answer, correct? Yes. We're not gonna have, this isn't gonna become geometry class, don't freak out, <laughs> right? We're not gonna suddenly start doing uh, areas of trapezoids and stuff. But so let's 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 see what what the hell would this look like, Jeff? What does this shit look like? I don't know. Um, one very basic type of continuous probability distribution is a uniform. It's called uniform distribution. What's that word uniform mean to you? When you hear the word uniform, what do you think? A uh, maid's outfit. Okay. All the same. All the same. I like it. Right. And in fact, that's where the word uniform came from, for example, for a, a maid's outfit. I like it. So it would be a standard thing that everybody kind of wears. Right. You think like a school uniform, everybody has the same basic thing that they wear. That's why it's uniform. It's evenly distributed. Everybody gets the same thing. So a uniform distribution is flat. 
everything has an equal probability. So let's say, um, let's say that at a bus stop, there's the two S's in bus stop. Um, at a bus stop, uh, the bus comes every 15 minutes or so. So if you get to the bus stop and you don't see the bus there, do you know how long until it's there? No. Couldn't it have just left? In which case you have almost 15 minutes to wait. Or couldn't it be just about to get there? So you have like less than a minute to wait. Are you guys with me on this? If you get to the bus stop and you don't see a bus, is it more likely you have one minute to wait or more likely that you have 14 minutes to wait? I love this. Hopefully you're having trouble with the right Say again? 14. No, it's both the same. You don't know. It, 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 it's all equally likely. If I don't see the bus, I have no idea if it just got left or if it's just about to get there, correct? I really want you guys with me on this. If the bus comes every 15 minutes and I don't know what time it starts, I get to the bus stop, I don't see it. Do you have any idea exactly how long until it gets there? You have zero idea. It's equally likely that it's going to take one minute, two minutes, three minutes. It could take four minutes and 57 seconds, right? That's as equally likely as anything. I don't know. So what would that look like? So what if I get there right when the bus gets there? How long do I have to wait for it? Zero minutes. So any from zero minutes, and of course, what's the longest I would have to wait for it? 15. 15, if I get, if I'm like right there, I'm like, wait, and he closes the door and he laughs as he drives away and I'm like, all right. Power so like, 15. And everything is equally likely because we don't know where I am in the cycle of time, right? Now, I love you guys. I don't know if anybody out there is having trouble because you're like, well, there's an answer. It's going to be seven minutes or something. I mean, there's an, of course, but we're talking about probabilities, aren't we? We don't have a freaking clue. So what's the probability? Everything's equally likely. So it looks like this. Why can you not tell me what the area of the shape is at the moment? What would you need? Go ahead. The height. I don't know what the height is. Does somebody remember what I just said a minute ago that if I can draw the picture and I make the area something, then I can answer all the questions, all the probability questions. What does the total area have to be? One. One. What's the probability that the bus comes somewhere between zero and 15 minutes? One. So the total area must be one. Get like zero reactions. I'm just going to keep going. I'm just going to pretend like everybody's sort of with me. What would the height have to be to make the area one? How long is this? 15. 15. Is it because that's 15? Yes. No. It's because that's 15 and that's zero. If that was 15 and that was three, then it would be 12, correct? Mm -hmm. So get the real length. I just have a problem with a zero here, but don't always think, oh, it's always going to be that number. No. So this is 15 across. So how tall does it have to be so the area comes out to one? It has to be one. Hold mm -hmm. up. Right. Yeah. Sorry. So what are you asking yourself? You're asking yourself, am I feeling lucky? No, you're asking yourself, 15 times what is one? Somebody knows, come on. What do you multiply any number by to make it one? 
It's, it's inverse. Inverse. It's reciprocal. So one fifteenth. One fifteenth. There you go. I don't know. You guys, either you really hate this shit or it's late on a Thursday. And you're like, please just let us out early, Jeff. All right. It's too bad. It's not going to happen. So if I ask you, what's the probability that I have to wait in between four and uh, 11 minutes for whatever reason? You want to know that probability. All you have to do is exactly like the dartboard, except now I can actually calculate the area is easier because they're all freaking rectangles, right? It's just rectangles. So the, let me say this in general. Anytime you're not talking to me, be on mute. That would be really good. Um, what was I say? Uh, oh, can you put these in here, right? So like four to 11. That makes a little area here, correct? The area of that is the answer. It's it's just so beautiful. Do you, do you understand how this is exactly like the dartboard? It's exactly the same, and you guys seem to catch on to that pretty quick. Well, here I don't have circles, which is actually better. I don't want to work with freaking pi r squared shit. Do you? No. Actually, I wouldn't have any problem with it. But in general, we don't want to do that. If I could just use rectangles instead, of course. So what is the area of this rectangle? That's going to be the answer. So would it be 11 minus 4? Good. Seven. How wide is it? 7. Times how tall is it? 1 15th. 7 15th of a chance. I really want this to make sense. It's a beautiful physical problem. It doesn't start off physical. We got uh, anywhere from zero to 15 minutes for this, but we draw a little box. Why? Because that I'm representing the probability distribution visually. So it's got to be 1 15th tall to make the whole area one, to make the total probability one. And then any sub part of this related to a question, bam. And then whatever the hell that is, it's like 0.4 something. Point four, uh, I don't know. Six. Point four six. Yeah. Exactly. Point four six. Well, we're repeating. Four six repeating. Six 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 six. Oh, six six. The good old evil answer. All right. Does that? Does that? I really hope. You went with me on that journey because because the idea that area for a continuous distribution area equals probability. If you can represent it visually and the total area is one. Okay, that makes sense. So here we go. I'm going to erase all this. Oh, actually, let me ask you more questions. Oh, please mute if you're not talking to me. Can you do that? Oh, okay. Um, let me ask you a couple more questions. Uh, what's the probability? Prob holy shit, Jeff. What's probability x is greater than uh, 15? Probably the X is greater than 15. It's probably that I wait more than 15 minutes. You could do it. What's the most I'm going to wait? 15 minutes. Yeah, and assuming all this is true, right? The most I'm going to wait is 15. So it's probably I wait more than 15 minutes. Zero. Zero. What's the area out here? What's any area above 15? Won't it be zero because there's no height? Yes, maybe. No. Get it. What's the probability X is greater than zero?
A hundred percent. hundred percent. If I go greater than zero, don't I pick up this whole thing? Right? It would be really hard to wait for negative time. So it's probably a wait for more than zero minutes, a hundred percent chance. What about this? Here's the weirdest question yet. What's the probability that I wait exactly six minutes? The weirdest question yet. Raise this a bit. Zero. Why do you say that? Because uh, it doesn't envelop any area. It's like infinitely thin. Exactly six minutes. Exactly. You need some interval. No, I don't have to go that far, don't worry. But if I ask you to find the area for something that has no width, right? So the answer to a continuous probability question is equal to the area in a graphical representation of that situation. Holy shit, Jeff, that was a lot of words. Probability equals area. What's the area of a line? It's gonna have to be zero because how wide is this? From six to six, it's zero. you really want to get weird can you guys tell me how many possible values are there here infinite infinite good all right stay with me stay with me this gets a little weird i don't know i'm not going to go too far with this so the probability of any individual thing is going to be zero because that would be one divided by infinity be really honest, it would be equal to iota. Iota is the smallest positive number. That's, that's the last I'll say that. That's the last I'll say that. Sorry, sorry. Sorry. For most humans, the answer to any question like this is going to be zero because that has zero areas. Is everybody with me on that? Because this thing is zero wide, correct? It goes from six to six. Okay, that's, I'll stop. Oh, yeah, but, uh, that pretty much is all the kind of questions I can ask you here. What was I going to do? There was something else I was going to do. Oh, yeah, that's okay. Now, oh, uh, one little thing here. We have a new distribution, don't we? Well, let's do it. I'll, I'll go ahead and do this. I'm going to create another example. I want you guys to try this. Let's say I have a uniform distribution. Let's say it goes from 3 to 20. Right? Uniform distribution, 3 to 20. So I want you to first draw the distribution. Indicate the height. Then I want you to figure out what's the probability that uh, X is between four and six. And then what's the probability that uh, X, uh, let's do this. Let's see if you guys are okay with this. 19, if X is between 19 and 25. Do it. Do this part. And that's from three, from three to 20, right? Three to 20, exactly. So the same way this was from zero to 15, sir. Uh,
Does anyone figure it out what the height's going to be? One out of 17. Yes. 17 across. So it's got to be one out of 17. So the whole area is one. That's equivalent to the sum of the probabilities is one. It means the same thing. So now these should be easy. And for some reason, I always have somebody like draw this and it's like four to that's crazy. It's three to 20. We've set it up here. This is what the situation is. And this is a subset of that. Here's four, here's six, obviously not to scale, and who cares? So what's that probability come out to be? Two over 17. Yeah, good. Two times 117, it's two over 17. Point one one seven six. Oh. I can do some stuff in my head, but maybe not out to the fourth decimal place. I don't know if that's right. Let's see if anybody else shouts. Is everybody okay out there? No, what's up? <laughs> I don't even know where to start. I'm I'm I'll get it though. I'll figure it oh, out. It's so good. You gotta ask me the minute. I say something and you're like, I have no idea what this man just said. You got to speak it up. Are you cool with this? Yes. Okay, now. So we've made this so that the total area is one, which is related to the probabilities I'll add to one. Now, any question I'm asked, I draw it in here. Just like I did here, four to six, I drew it. And, and then the answer is equal to the area of that. So. It's 2y and it's 1 17th tall. So 2 times 1 17th is the area, which is the answer, which is the probability. So for a continuous distribution, if you can draw it, probability equals area. And I sound like I'm drunk. Probability. Now I sound like Mitch McConnell. But, or, it's a little bit like Jimmy Stewart. Mary, don't you know me? Um, anybody freaked out about this question? Is there anything freaky about this question? It goes past the designated numbers. Yeah, we don't give a shit about that, do we? We don't give the first shit. So 19 to 25. Well, all this doesn't add anything. It's all got a height of zero out there. So all I care about is the snippet that's actually in what could possibly happen. Okay. So then of course, what's that gonna be? One out of 17. One out of 17, which is point oh five eight eight. About a six percent chance. Compared to some stuff we've done, I'm hoping this doesn't seem too evil. Now let me let me use this guy as an example. So what I was about to say earlier. Any any questions on this? By the way, I don't want to steamroll anybody. Where do you think the average is? Wait, why is the chances of X being uh, more than 19 and less than 25, 117? All right, so if, so from 19, so here's 19, right? Huh? From 19 to 25, isn't this the only part that has any height to it for 20? Yeah, so it would be 117, right? Done. Yeah, that's exactly what we got. Okay. Yeah, cool. it's, it's exactly what we got. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then whatever that was, 0. 0.0558 or 0588. Thank you. Um, where do you think the mean would be? Cool. 
Oh, Everything's okay. sorry. Good. 15. 15. What is 15? Why do you say 15? Uh, three divided by 20. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> oh, no. I'm way off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, I, I was way off. Now, listen, listen. Listen, listen. If I roll a die a hundred times, if I roll a die a hundred times, what would the average that I would expect be to show up on the die? So if I roll it and I record the number, roll it and I record the number and take the average of all those, what should that be? Maybe that's too hard. I, I, I think. Um, I'm going to go with that. So if I'm rolling a die, you can get one, two, three, four, five, six, correct? Normal die, not a D&D &D die. D&D die, D&D die. &D um, I expect these all to show up in equal numbers, correct? Isn't that what we should expect? Will they? No, because of fluctuations, random fluctuations. But what should I expect that they all show up in equal amounts? So if there were five ones, I would expect there to be five twos and five threes and five fours and five fives and five sixes. So then what would the average be? It would just be the number right in the middle. Because as many ones as show up, that many sixes will show up. As many twos show up, that many, you can do it, you have fives, as many threes as fours. So the average would be 3.5 right in the middle. Isn't that what the situation is? Everything's equally likely. So the average is going to be right in the middle. It's going to be 3 plus 20 divided by 2. My God, Jeff. Okay, I'll do it. There you go. It's going to be 11.5. So in general, in general, oh, you're going to love this. Oh, you're going to love this. I just know it, especially if I can draw it. Let's see. Are you ready? Here is the most general uniform distribution. Can somebody tell me what the height would be of this distribution, A to B? One over B? No. Because was this one over 20? One over A minus B. I mean, B oh. plus A? Yes. How did we get ones over 17? We did 20 minus 3, right? And then we did 1 divided by that. So here we would do B minus A, 1 divided by that. And do you see it? Was that 117th terribly difficult? No. Is this a little weird? Yes. So anytime I try to do something generally, it's going to look worse than it is in any specific case. This is basically the definition of formulas. Now, the mean should be right in the middle. So the mean will be A plus B divided by 2. Somebody mentioned calculus earlier. So I'm gonna very quickly teach you calculus. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm gonna teach you calculus. Um, but here's what the standard deviation is. And I'm really curious. We'll see. I'm gonna write the standard deviation down and then I want your reaction. And, and now I'm like, what is it? I don't know if I remember. Yes, I do. Let me immediately say this. We're actually not going to use these very often. There are a couple of problems in the homework where you're going to have to use these equations and it's just plug shit in. Anybody have an immediate reaction to this? Can you all see that okay? Where does the 12 come from? Yay! Where does the 12 come from? Yay! Do any of you guys watch Doctor Who by any chance? Mm -hmm. Do you know what people say when they go first into a Stardust? Why is it bigger on the inside than the outside? No. All right. So whenever I teach this, I'm always like, come on, say it, say it. You know, you want to say it. Come on, say it, say it. Where's that 12 come from? Yes. Thank you. Um, what's funny is there's been all kinds of numbers that shown up that you haven't asked about. And then suddenly 12 is like, what's up with this 12? So if you are really curious, I actually somewhere 
have this written out, the proof of this. Uh, just to warn you, though, it does use calculus. But if you want to see it, just shoot me an email. I can send it to you, assuming I can find it. Hopefully, it's on my computer here, not at the not at the office. I'll take you at your word. Okay. So, um, for example, for this situation, let me see here. Last thing we'll do, and then we'll, we'll stop. Okay. Stop the. I'll stop the pain. Um, in this situation, what's B? 20. 20. So it'll be 20 minus 3 squared mm -hmm. divided by 12. So just throw all that shit in your calculator and see what you get. Let's see. Uh, you can do it, Jeff. Can you do it? You did it. Yeah. Everybody get that? I get 4.907. Did I take a square root? Yes, it. Good job, Jeff. Okay. So again, those two formulas are not hyper important, but I did assign a couple of homework problems that uses them. I just want you to know, because again, every time I showed you a new distribution, we have to have a new way to figure out the mean and the standard deviation. So that's really just for completeness, just to show you. Uh, I think that's enough for today. What do you guys think? Yes. I don't know what time it is. Okay. That, I think that's not bad to stop there. If anyone's worried that I'm not giving you your full tuition's worth, just talk to my dean. I'm sorry. Um, I have actually had somebody upset at me because I let the class out early a couple of times. They were like, excuse me, you're, you're I'm like, holy shit. Go take it up with my chair. Um, I probably shouldn't have recorded that part. So let me know if you have any questions. <laughs> let me know if you have any questions. Otherwise, uh, you are free to go. Uh, have a good weekend. Thank you so much, man. No worries. Anytime. Um, I might contact you tomorrow um, just regarding the whole makeup quiz situation. Yes, okay. And I moved my doctor's appointment so I can attend Monday. Oh, okay. Yeah, whatever they, works. They had an opening open up, so. Sweet. Good. I get to go get shots up and down my spine. I'm sorry about it. It's okay. I'm going to feel better after. I get shots in this eyeball every seven weeks. So that's, oh, cortisone? No, 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 no. It's, it's, uh, it's a long story, but every seven weeks, well, it's not a long story. I just lost vision in this eye, or not all vision. And come to find out, it's this weird thing uh, that I might have a genetic predisposition. So now every seven weeks, I get a shot just to keep the swelling down in the hopes that it, it will heal a bit. So my depth perception was really bad right after it happened, which is oh, funny. That's deep. Yeah, it's neat stuff. If you <laughs> live long enough, stuff happens. All right. So what's up? Yeah, we're getting old. All right, see you later. Take care, man. Okay, I have a question on the 3.1, three, on the 3.36. Wait, wait, so chapter, so where are we at? Sorry. 3.1. Three, 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 number? 36. 36, okay. Is that the one with the, uh, no, that's the one with the, oh. All right. Bam. So the whole point with this is how do you, so the sample space is a collection of all. Sample space is a collection of all the things that could happen. So if you take one book from the shelf, can you just give me an example of what could happen? Just, just give me an example of one thing that could happen. You take one book, what could you have picked? Just give me one example. Do you, so I've got these 12 books and I want you to pick one of them. How could you identify to me the book you picked? Can you 
Can you tell me, am I looking at the right problem? You got the yes. one that shelf holds 12 books? Okay. Are you showing me something or are you reading something? <laughs> really? Okay. It's gonna be one, but. No, 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 it's not asking you for a probability. There's no probability question here at all. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So it's, can you just tell me if you picked a book, what could you have picked? Just give me one thing you could pick. Sort of like if I said, pick a card, you could pick the seven of diamonds. There, there's an example. So tell me, which book could you pick? Just give me one example. Uh, one of fiction. All right, so let me let me kind of pretend like I, I don't think you meant this, but yeah, you could pick the fiction book that has the number one on it, correct? Yes. Oh, okay, you now I understand. Fiction one, that's one thing that could happen. Now, what you're gonna do is just list everything that could happen. I'm just gonna keep going and cover all the possibilities. Oh, okay, okay. Of course, how many things should be in this list? There should be 12. This is 12 books. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. How's everybody else? All right, I'm gonna assume everybody's good. Oh, uh, I was wondering if uh, we could go over one of the questions on my quiz. Sure. Uh, 